See, once you see Calvary and you understand the price that Jesus paid for you on Calvary's cross. For, for most of us, we've never really experienced that. We haven't really seen him uh, uh, the way he was. Because according to Isaiah, Isaiah said that he was not one to behold with such beauty. That because of the way he had been beaten and bruised and brutalized because of the stripes that he bore upon his back and, and how they riveted his body and tore his flesh as they beat him with these whips with bone and metal uh, 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 pressed into the, the leather strips that every time they would lash him it, and pull it away it would tear literally, literally chunks of flesh off his back that he was so bruised and beaten and battered that he was unrecognizable they didn't even know I mean you didn't even know who he was I mean once you really began to see Calvary and the price that he paid and you really own that and, and you make him Lord it, it makes it difficult for you to go back to being something Amen. of the old. Once you've accepted him. This is why the Bible said that if any man puts his hand to the plow and he turns back he's unfit for the kingdom of God. And that we're not like those of, of the spirit of tradition. That we turn back no because we have seen Calvary for ourselves. We've seen Jesus. We've seen him. So when the scripture says and we confess him and we make him and we believe in him that God raised him from the dead every time I think about him brothers and sisters it makes me want to love him all the more when I think that he gave his life for a wretch like me that he sacrificed his life and I wasn't even saved I wasn't even living right and I'm, I'm struggling now but yet he made, he made the sacrifice on my behalf and gave me this life to live for him he says once we understand Calvary and we believe in our heart God raised him from the dead you shall be saved so these verses seem plain enough and simple enough but but the meaning runs so deep and once we capture it when we get it then with all of the essence of our being and with all of our breath and all of our life we live our lives for him if you're not living your life for him, if you can't see this, if, you, if, you're, not, if, you, if you're not walking in, in the righteousness and the holiness of God, at least having a desire on the inside. Because we all struggle with some kind of vice. We all struggle with some kind of sin. But there ought to be something in you that propels you, that, that bothers you when sin is present. That you want to, oh, this is not what I want to do. I want to live my life for God. If, if that doesn't happen to you and you can wallow in sin and live in sin and dib and dab and it doesn't touch you, you're not you don't feel guilty about it, you don't have no conscience about it, brothers and sisters, you have never seen Calvary. All right. And most likely you're not saved. All right. Worthy is the Holy, holy is he.